Hello and welcome to The Crimson Stitchery. My name is Anushka and this video is a video tutorial about how to sew on buttons. So I love wearing clothing with buttons, whether that's button-up shirts or cardigans. I love buttons and little trimming. I think that it's really important to keep mending our clothing and wearing it again and again and making sure that our clothes live the fullest life possible. And something like sewing on a button is really quick to do and requires minimum skills. I've been sewing for over 20 years now, both personally and professionally and along the way I've come up with a few great little tricks for how to sew on buttons in a way that is secure, strong, fast and reliable. In this video tutorial I'm going to demonstrate how to sew on three different types of buttons. Um, a shank button, a button with two holes and a button with four holes and I will be doing it by hand using my rather overflowing trusty sewing kit here and choosing buttons out of my button tin here. So let's get started. For this tutorial you will need your buttons, there's lots of different types of buttons so I will be addressing how to sew on shank buttons which are these two here so your shank buttons could have a little bit coming out of the button kind of like a mushroom um, with a hole through the middle for you to sew through so that's one type of shank button um, or the shank button could be like this one where it's got a little metal insertion um, and like a little round hook for it. So these are both different types of shank buttons. Or you could get a button like this, which has got four holes in the middle, or alternatively like this, which has got two holes in the middle. You'll need a regular sewing needle. Doesn't have to be anything fancy. This is literally just the first one that I picked up. Um, if you want, you could use a shorter needle. That might be helpful, but I've just got a regular old hand sewing needle. A thimble, I always sew using a thimble. A pair of snips. I sew using a piece of beeswax but if you don't have beeswax you could also use the end of an old candle when it's finished burning down um, or a new candle if you want but beeswax is something that's really handy to have in your sewing kit. And of course you'll need some sewing thread. So here again I've just got regular old um, machine thread which is quite thin. This is my favourite thread to use, this, these black and white ones. It's called Coates Trey Churchill and the reason that I like it is because it's quite sturdy and very very strong but this is just a random roll of um, mercerised cotton. So these are all threads that you can find very commonly in a sewing shop and the kind of threads that you would run through your sewing machine. If you prefer, you could sew on buttons using buttonhole thread. Um, it's quite difficult to see in the picture, but this is buttonhole thread. This is a roll of Gutemann buttonhole thread, and it's a lot thicker than normal um, sewing machine thread. Hope that you can get a sense of the difference. And you would normally use buttonhole thread to sew really um, strong, buttonholes for coats and things like that but I also do use buttonhole thread to sew on actual buttons because it makes it much stronger. So for the purposes of this video I'm going to be using regular thin sewing thread just because I think that that's probably what most people have got lying around and easily available to them. So I'm going to start by reattaching this shank button to the spot where it has fallen off. You can see where it's pulled on the fabric the old thread there. And this is obviously a contrast button and for the purposes of this video I'm going to go in and sew it on with white thread um, but normally I would probably use navy thread so that it was a little bit more discreet. So I'll start by pulling out a length of thread and what I'm going to do straight away is I'm going to fold it in half. So I'm pulling out a length of thread, folding it in half going all the way down um, and I'll just cut it off the reel, get rid of that and then I'm going to take this doubled up thread and I'm going to thread my needle with it okay and even it out so I'm basically going to be sewing on a button using four lengths of thread. When I was studying tailoring my teacher used to quote Animal Farm and say, four threads good, two threads bad. <laughs> so then I'm just going to lightly run it through the beeswax. So I've run it through the beeswax and then I'm just going to 
run my fingers down the threads again um, just to help distribute the beeswax a bit more and what the beeswax does is it just smooths the threads together helps them stick together more and just causes a little tiny bit of viscosity to stop there being any friction because there's so many layers of threads together so I'm using four layers of sewing thread but I have in the past also sewn on buttons using eight layers of sewing thread if you want to get the job done really quickly if I was using the much thicker buttonhole thread I would probably use two threads but here I'm using four because I've got the thinner machine sewing thread so just start by trimming the ends of the thread so that they're all flush and then I'm not going to tie a knot in the end of my thread I'm just going to go in and anchor it in the fabric of my garment by stitching in on myself a couple of times I've just done it two times I might go for the third and then as I stitch in on myself I'm kind of just going round where I previously sewed. So that's anchored it nice and strong. Now take my shank and it's really easy when you've got a shank button like this, it's really easy. You just go through the hole and you literally just anchor it in and sew it on. So I'll normally do this three or four times. And just keep going through the hole and then going through the fabric. And that feels pretty secure now, just done it about three times. So again, I'll just go in underneath the button into the fabric and just stitch into it and anchor it in. Feels pretty firm to me and I'll just cut it off. So that's really, really easy. And now I can button the strap back on my trousers. Done. Next up, I've got this beautiful silk blouse which has lost a button on the cuff and I don't have the original button for this anymore however it was just quite basic and white so I've just found a button which has got two holes here in my button jar um, and because it's not the original button I'm just going to start by checking that it will fit through the buttonhole which it does really nicely so I'm going to get ready to sew it on and because this is a really fine silk shirt I have actually changed sewing needle and I've gone to a much finer sewing needle um, so if I compare that to this one you can see the difference so for my silk shirt I've gone for um, a between very fine sewing needle which is used a lot for tailoring and this kind of bog standard, much longer and thicker sewing needle, which is much easier to handle, um, that's just called a sharp. So I'm going to put the sharp to one side and I'm going to use the between for this delicate silk blouse. So I'm going to start off in exactly the same way with my thread, pulling out some thread, move it so you can see, doubling it up. Not too long, I think that's probably about 30 centimetres or one foot um, because I'm only sewing on one button and it gets a bit confusing if you um, work with too long a length of thread. I'm just going to trim the end, thread my needle, so I'm threading it with the two ends poking out but um, you might find it a lot easier to thread the needle with the looped over end of thread, that's fine. Either way it will get the job done. So even it out, okay, and grab my beeswax, and just lightly run it through and then run it through my fingers to just spread out the beeswax and then evening out the ends with snipping them. So this button is completely flat and it doesn't have a shank, it doesn't have that bit sticking out of the end of it. So what that means, when we're sewing on these kind of flat buttons, which are much more common, 
It means that we have to create the shank ourselves through the sewing. So how do we do that? Again, find the point where the button came off. There's a length of thread there. I'm just gonna snip it off and start by anchoring the thread through all the layers of the fabric. So I'm just doing that by stitching in twice and I'm being quite careful because of the silk of this fabric. Okay, now I've got my button. So I'm gonna go up through one hole, down through the other hole. Careful not to twist my thread in any way. And when I stitch back into the fabric now, I'm not going to pull it tight. So I'm taking the stitch there, pulling the thread down, but can you see there, I'm leaving some thread. Now that's a bit too much, that's about a centimetre. I'm gonna pull it down to about three quarters of a centimetre or about a quarter of an inch. So just really carefully pulling the thread. Okay, so yeah, at the moment that's about half a centimetre gap. So you can see the button is about half a centimetre away from the fabric. And I'm gonna leave it like that. So I'm not pulling it tight, leaving that gap, carefully going through the button again, okay, using my thumb to keep the button away from the fabric. Okay, so it's still away from the fabric. Taking the stitch in the fabric. And because this is quite delicate fabric, it's already getting very stiff. So it already feels quite strong. But I am gonna go ahead and take a third stitch through. Okay, and the third stitch that I've taken through the button, I'm not going directly through the fabric, okay? So I haven't gone into the fabric yet. Instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap it round and round that thread loop that I'd created. I did it about three or four times until the wrap gets to the bottom, right? Until it gets to the bottom of the fabric again. And then I'm gonna go all the way through, all the way through to the other side. Just checking that everything's nice and neat and taut. There's no thread hanging out anywhere. I'm gonna secure my thread just by taking two stitches into the fabric. And cut it off. Okay, so let's take another look at that. I've sewn my button on, but I didn't pull it taut into the fabric. I left a bit of a gap. Now if I turn it to the side, you can see that the button is sitting away from the fabric of the shirt. And so what I've done is I've created a shank with the thread. I've created the shank by sewing the button on a little bit away from the fabric and then eventually wrapping the thread round and round before I secure it down into the fabric, okay? So this button didn't come with a shank made into the shape of the button, but I have made the shank by sewing it on. And what that shank does is it creates that little gap for the fabric of the buttonhole to sit in. So the buttonhole will go around the button and that gap that the thread loops were making is for the width of this fabric to just sit in there and just chill out. And what that means is that there's enough space for the two layers of fabric and so there won't be undue tension placed on the button and on this thread that's sewn the button on, right? There won't be undue tension due to it being too tight because of this layer of fabric. So there's just enough space for the buttonhole to go around the button and sit on top of the button placket. And that's that. So on my final button tutorial, I'm gonna be reattaching another button onto the front placket of a man's shirt. And it's the bottom one that's come off. And again, there's just a bit of old thread where the old button fell off on. So now I'm going to be sewing on a button which has got four holes which is found really commonly on shirt buttons. So again, because I don't have the original button, I'm just gonna double check the size by pushing this one through a buttonhole. And that's absolutely fine, it just went in with no problem. Let's sew on the four hole button. And I'm going to sew it on using this beigey brown color. 
So again, same, same drill, pull out a length of thread, about a foot, double it up. As you get more experienced at sewing on buttons, you'll start to learn how long a piece of thread to pull out because when I first started doing it, um, I made it way too long because I thought it would save me time in re-threading, but actually it wasted loads of time because the thread kept getting tangled up. So sort of swings and roundabouts and you'll find your own way. So I've got my four layers of thread here. Run it along the beeswax. Run the beeswax through my fingers. Trim the ends. And we're ready to sew on the new button. So I'm just gonna pull out the old threads that were there because there's gonna be a lot of thread going on. So I don't want anything I don't need, okay. Anchor the button in the same way, just by taking a couple of stitches into the same place. Okay, so that's nice and firm. So you don't need to tie a knot because you've anchored the thread in on itself. Why don't you use knots, you're asking? Um, I was always taught not to use knots because there's no guarantee of when the knot will become undone. I'm not a sailor, so I'm obviously not very good at tying knots. So that was the reason offered to me when I was in school for tailoring. However, my personal reason not to use knots is because knots create a little lump, a little hard lump of thread. And sure, you might not notice it in a thick shirting cotton like this, but in a nice, soft, silky shirting fabric like this, silk satin, the knot would actually stand out through the fabric and be an unsightly little lump. So it's for aesthetic purposes as well as security. So I've secured my thread. And now I'm going to sew through the button in pairs. I'm gonna go in opposites. So the um, up and down and then left and right, okay? So I'll just start by doing up and down. So going through the opposite hole of the button. And you'll notice that I've just put my thimble on. And I did mention at the beginning of the video that I always sew using a thimble, but I actually forgot to put it on because I was doing all of the demonstrations for this video. I would definitely recommend using a thimble if you're sewing on a whole line of buttons, you know, just one or two, it's not a big deal. But the reason that I've felt the need now to use a thimble and the reason that I've noticed that it was missing is because this fabric is a lot stiffer and I'm having to work a lot harder to get the needle into the fabric. I'm having to push a lot harder. Whereas with the other fabrics I was just sewing on, um, the silk was very soft and the linen was very loose. So the needle just went straight in. But now I'm actually having to use my muscles of my hands and I want to protect them so I'm using the thimble for that. Like I said I would normally approach hand sewing with a thimble full stop. Okay so I've started by taking the first stitch and remember that the button has to sit about half a centimeter so less than a quarter of an inch away from the fabric. Okay Take that stitch. Okay, so I've done two stitches um, on one pair of the button holes. And then now I'm gonna do the opposite and I'm still being really careful and I'm using my thumbnail here to secure the button away from the fabric. So I'm never just yanking the thread, I'm just very carefully pulling it through. Take the stitch again. And here I've done two stitches on one pair of holes and two stitches on the other pair of holes. If you had a much bigger and heavier button, you might want to go for three or four. Um, but I think for this shirt button, two on each side is enough. So now we're gonna prepare the shank. So we're gonna go up again into one of the pairs, up and down through the button. Okay, but not into the fabric yet. Instead, we're gonna go round and round about four or five times this one wanted until it until the thread hits the fabric and then I'm going to go into the fabric. So I don't know if you noticed that as I put my needle into the fabric I used the thimble to push the needle through. So I didn't push the needle through using the soft fingertips I used the metal of the thimble to just go ahead and push it through. Pull it out underneath. Turn it round 
and then just secure the thread. And again, can you see I'm putting the needle in with my forefinger and thumb and then I'm using my middle finger with a thimble always on the knuckle to push it through. I'll just do that again there and using the knuckle to push it through. That's it. So here's my little flat shirt button and if I turn it to the side you can notice it's got its own little thread shank so it's sitting away from the fabric of the shirt. And now when I button it up it goes on easy as pie and it just sits on top of the fabric of the button placket um, and it doesn't pull in any way. There's no pulling going on in the fabric at all which again saves us some tension and saves us some unnecessary wear and pulling. And that's it! I hope that you've enjoyed this video tutorial. It is actually the first time that I've filmed a video tutorial and I'd love to know what your approaches are to sewing on buttons. Do you use any extra tips and tricks that I haven't covered? Um, and if so, what are they? I'd love to know. Please do also feel free to leave me a comment making any suggestions about further video tutorials you'd like me to film, whether that's to do with mending, sewing, knitting or other crafts. I'd be really interested to get your feedback. If you've enjoyed this video do give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel below if you haven't done already. The Crimson Stitchery features a regular fortnightly craft podcast which is all about knitting, sewing, mending and making all things that are beautiful and useful. Thanks for watching and see you soon.